First of all, guys, I'm not gonna be continuing. What if Naruto was the god of life, death, and chakra? You guys really seem to dislike that, so I guess there's no point. But here's something new to take its place, guys. What if Naruto was a special Senju Sage part one, guys? If you enjoy C1C so part two, just comment down below and tell me, and I'll be posting it as soon as possible for you guys to enjoy. And also, guys, don't forget. That I indeed have 4 channels, yes, that's right. Anime King, Anime King 2, Anime King 3, and Anime Prince, guys. Which, I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the Anime King family. And thank you for all of your help and your support. And what do you say we jump right into this, guys? Begin now. Um, Sensei, eight-year-old, Choji Akimichi spoke up. As Aruka turned towards him, what is it, Choji, he said. I don't want to beat up my friend. Aruka gave him a smile, this is nuts. What you're doing, this is a traditional shinobi spar. Even Hokage and his friends train like this to grow stronger. Shikamaru who was on the opposite side though, he did not listen. As he walked out of the ring, I'm fine with the ring out, he said. You can just call the next pair. Aruka sighed. Fine. Just come back and do this symbol of harmony, he said. Once that was done, alright the next, he went over the clipboard. Naruto Uzumaki vs Sasuke Uchiha. As Sasuke walked into the ring that was drawn on the ground, the girls squealed with joy. Sasuke kind of hated when they did that, he thought, that by ignoring them would make them stop. However, he was wrong. It just made them a lot worse. It seems they were attracted to his loner personality. As he looked to the kid that walked into the ring with him, he had blonde hair and blue eyes, and three strange whisker-like markings on each of his cheeks. Sasuke could see that he should not relax when it come to this boy. His expression was already rebellious, and his knuckles bruised up, and a faded bruise on his cheek, and a butterfly bandage on his forehead. As that told him that this kid was a fighter. Let's do this, said Naruto. He had on a grin that screamed defiance and confidence. Naruto, Aruka said. Before this war, you have to make the symbol of combat. It's the proper protocol. I couldn't give a crap, Naruto said rather loudly. Just start the fight, yeah? Tch, so stupid, Sasuke said. Fine. I'll take you down in one. Stop it, you two. Aruka said. Now listen. These shinobi spars are a tradition that has been passed down for generations. I realize that is a lot of etiquette, but here, at the academy, we're teaching you the basics from D1. First, you always face your opponent and point your fingers like this. This is a symbol of combat. It represents half of the seals that will be able to activate a ninjutsu technique. And it means I have come to face you in battle. When the spar is over, you then proceed to meet the symbol of harmony. To acknowledge that the both of you are still comrades. This is all a part of the proper etiquette for a shinobi spar and... Aruka stopped when he saw Naruto looking away, cleaning his ear with his pinky finger. Naruto, are you listening to me? He said. This is the second time I've told you this. Yeah, 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 said Naruto. Say yes and say it once, you little brat. Naruto simply scoffed as he looked towards Sasuke as he formed the symbol. Sasuke formed the symbol as well before they moved back. Alright, begin, Aruka said. Sasuke was taken aback as the fight began. Every blow that he threw, Naruto countered every single one of them and threw back some nasty blows of his own. Sasuke was always good at everything within the class. Sasuke was a smart, intellect boy that was able to adapt really quickly to things. Yet, here he was, barely holding on to surviving this battle as the fists kept on flying at him. The other students were shocked. None of them were expecting Naruto to be this good. Sasuke grunted as a fist slammed into his gut hard. And when he hunched over, it brought back memories of that night. When he was hunched over on the ground coughing, his brother Itachi Uchiha looking down at him with those cold, rootless eyes. 
Sasuke glanced back up and it wasn't Naruto in front of him anymore. It was Itachi. The source of his hatred and anger. Sasuke felt that rage fill him and his speed seemed to just double as he moved. Attacking with a new ferocity that he wasn't using before. He punched his brother and knocked him as he knocked him down to the ground. He then jumped on top of him. His eyes wide with rage. Sasuke pulled his face back right to pound. Itachi faced the mush. That is when he heard the girls cheering. And then he heard. Sasuke wins. Arugak spoke up calling his name. Declaring him the winner. Looking down. Itachi spoke however. It was Naruto's voice that came from his mouth. I've seen eyes like that before. But for once. It's not directed at me. The image fade back Naruto. Tell me. Who are you looking at? Said Naruto. Sasuke twitch. As he froze up. However, he quickly pulled himself off Naruto. Now, Arika said, both of you made the symbol of harmony and we will move on. As Naruto got up and rubbed the bruise that had resurfaced after Sasuke had punched him hard on it. As he put his fingers out, giving Sasuke a calculated look, Sasuke gave him the same as the both of them hooked fingers. They let go immediately as Sasuke turned away, gritting his teeth. Later, we could find Sasuke sitting on top of the Fort Ikaiya's monument. He had never been out there before, however, Aruka saw the look in his eyes as he told him that it was a good place to go and just think, to clear your mind. He said that he got the idea from another student. When asked who, Aruka just shrugged and walked away. Sasuke had to admit he felt so small up here, like his problems were just a single drop in a vast ocean. Oi! Sasuke turned as he saw that kid from the academy, Naruto, hands in his pockets. As he hadn't changed shirts, so his white t-shirt still had some blood spatter on it. Surprisingly though, his busted lip had already healed and the bruise had already completely faded away. As Naruto pointed on top of the stone, you're in my seat, he said. I don't see your name on it, loser, Sasuke said. What did you say to me, little shit? You want me to kick you off, said Naruto. Little shit. I'm as tall as you, Sasuke said. Before he scoffed and looked away, what are you even doing here? I always come up here, said Naruto as he walked over and sat down. The people in this village treat me like crap, so I come up here. I look over the village and, I don't know, I feel something. Something, Sasuke said, raising an eyebrow. I'm gonna be an awesome ninja, and I'm gonna continue to do old man's work. Old man, Sasuke said, the Hokage. I'm gonna take over for him as Hokage one day, and then everyone here, they will acknowledge my existence, said Naruto. Sasuke scoffed in amusement. What a foolish dream. Sasuke felt his color grabbed as Naruto yanked him towards him and looked into his eyes with a fire that burned brighter than Sasuke's ever seen before. They were so intense. This kid had 100% confidence that his dream will come true. Say that again, said Naruto. Sasuke slapped away Naruto's hand. Get off me, he said. As his eyes turned into a glare, I said it was a foolish dream. Empty words are not going to make them reality. All dreams start out as words. They are the foundations that you can build them on. Without dreams, we will fall into stagnation and our life will become inconsequential, said Naruto. Sasuke blinked as he turned around confused. Stagnation? Inconsequential? What that mean, he asked confused. I don't know, said Naruto. But that is what Gigi told me when I told him about my dream. And if the Hokage says it, it must be important, said Naruto. It is indeed Naruto kun. Both of them turned, as they were rather surprised, as the elder the third Hokage stood there. Ah, JJ said Naruto as he jumped to his feet. This punk over here said that my dream is dumb. Tch, said Sasuke looking away. Don't be too hard on Sasuke kun, Harrison said walking over. As he knelt behind Sasuke and placed a hand on his shoulder. Sasuke life has been rough recently, so it's understandable if. He's skeptical, but it is amazing that you two found each other up here. Huh? What are you talking about, old man? said Naruto. You both have darkness in your life. A darkness that people couldn't understand. Sasuke's eyes widened upon hearing that as he turned his head and looked at Naruto with shock. This kid had a rough life? I think that out of everyone else within this village, you are the ones that can understand each other and know each other the best. Sasuke looked at Naruto skeptically as Naruto gave him that same look. As the both of them spoke, you mean that pampered prince? You mean that chubby making idiot? As heroes and chuckled as he pat them on the head. Aruka told me that you both spar today, the two strongest in the class. If you were that energetic doing the spar, you should have gotten a feeling for each other reasons doing the fighting. 
as he rose to his full height once again as he smiled brightly at them. I believe if you two both talk, you will become great friends. It's not good to keep everything bottled up inside. With that he poofed away. Naruto was a bit confused as he sat back down next to Sasuke, humming a bit. What did he mean? Had it rough, said Naruto. Sasuke lowered his head behind his collar. I don't want to talk about it, he said. Tch, fine, said Naruto. Not like I want to talk to a punk like you anyway. I just came here to enjoy the view. Sasuke scoffed as he turned away, as he thought back to the spar that they had earlier. The third said that they should be able to understand each other. And Sasuke remembered Itachi saying something similar once, that when two warriors clash, their minds are connected and their true feelings are displayed to one another. Slowly Sasuke glanced towards him, as Naruto still had that defiant look on his face, as he glanced over the village. You have determination, Sasuke suddenly spoke up, as Naruto looked at him. I got that, from our spar. You're constantly trying to prove yourself, and the determination is just an outlet for all the hate you hold inside. Hatred for what, he asks. Why should I answer? You didn't, said Naruto. Sasuke scoffed as he looked away once again. It took him a few seconds. I'm from the Uchiha clan, he said. My brother was the strongest of all of us. He was my hero. For as long as I can remember, I have always wanted to be just like him. Then, about a month ago, Sasuke said, closing his eyes, as he took a deep breath, as Naruto saw the emotions flash across his face. About a month ago, he repeated, my brother killed my entire clan before fleeing the village. Naruto blinked in surprise. Wow. That sucks, I guess. What about you, Sasuke asked. What about me, said Naruto. Have you lost anyone? The Hokage said that we should be able to understand each other. I don't think he meant it like that, said Naruto. I've never lost a family member. Oh, Sasuke said. As he envied Naruto a bit for her lucky E. Then again, said Naruto, cutting the train of thought off. I've never had any to begin with. Sasuke blinked in surprise. Maybe he wasn't so lucky after all. Yeah, I'm an orphan. I have no idea who my parents are. I think they died the day I was born. During the Kyuubi attack or something. Oh. Is that why you have such a suppressed hatred? Nah, I don't really hate the Kyuubi, said Naruto. In fact, I don't really hate anything. That's a total crap, said Sasuke. The Hokage said that we'll be able to understand each other since we spar. And I felt a lot of hatred coming from you. What do you know, said Naruto looking away. I know a look of hatred. I see it every time I look in the mirror. So tell me, Sasuke said. Naruto kept on his defiant look for a few moments until he seemed to just deflate as he looked over the village. The villagers, I guess. They think I'm blind or deaf. However, I see and hear everything. Most of these people, they glare at me for no reason. And they whisper things about me even though they don't know me. They whisper such hateful things. Why would they do that? I mean, you're a troublemaking fool, but why would they... Shut it, said Naruto. I only start to cause trouble because they whisper a bunch of crap about me. Then, why are they whispering? I don't know, said Naruto. They've been doing it for as long as I can remember. When I ask the old man, he get all dodgy, and he changed the subject, not real telling me. So you have no idea what it's like to lose family, and I have no idea what it's like to not have family and be whispered about by the villagers. Sasuke raised the eyebrow in confusion. How exactly are we supposed to understand each other? Well, I don't think that JJ meant that we will understand the thingy itself. I think he meant that we will understand the pain it caused. The thingy? Sasuke said confused. JJ has a word for it, but I can't say it. You should work on that. Give me a break, alright? I never had someone to teach me properly, said Naruto. Sasuke scoffed in amusement. As he looked over the village once again. Heh, <laughs> you're pretty useless, aren't you? Hey, shut it, said Naruto. I'll kick you down from here. Time skip. As Sasuke walked into the academy the next day, he couldn't help but feel happy. Yes, it was probably happiness that he felt. He and Naruto had talked a lot the previous evening, and the third was right. Though their situation was different, they had connected because of the pain that they felt. Despite them being so different, Sasuke was also proud of himself as he spent the night studying a dictionary. He went through it rather long, as he wanted to confuse Naruto with the big words the next day, just to make him look stupid. 
Sasuke looked around the classroom. The seat that he took the previous day, two fine girls were sitting on either side already. They were watching him very carefully. Sasuke was reluctant to go there. As he looked around until he saw, Naruto had an open seat beside him. As Naruto's asleep, Sasuke walked over. Yo, said Sasuke as he sat down next to him. Naruto opened a single eye. Yo, he said to yawn. You look tired. I was up late last night, Sasuke said, with a smirk. He wouldn't tell him why he was up late. He would just use it to make him look dumb. Yeah, same here. I'm very haggard, said Naruto. I spent most of last night reading a dictionary. It was exhilarating and refreshing, and at the same time very vexatious. Sasuke twitched rather violently as he looked away. He had no idea what that last word meant. I also studied the dictionary, he said, but I never got that far into it. Yeah, those words were probably the only ones I probably memorized, said Naruto, with a tired sigh. It's way too much of a hassle to bother with big words. Hmm, Sasuke said. Alright, alright, everyone settle down, Aruka said. However, no one settled down. So he activated his famous jutsu, the big headed jutsu. Shut the hell up, he yelled, as everyone went quiet. Later that day, Naruto and Sasuke went to the library. Sasuke noticed the look that the librarian gave Naruto, as she looked to be on the verge of kicking him out, however. It was when she saw that Sasuke was there. Her mood completely changed. Sasuke did not say anything about it though, as Naruto was in a good mood, and Sasuke finally had a real friend. Well, Sasuke hadn't really said that they were friends yet, and although he was low to admit it, he saw Naruto as his friend. So now they were looking through the limited listing. As he went through scroll after scroll, researching chakra, Naruto wanted to go and eat some ramen, however Sasuke convinced him. After all, he wasn't going to get strong by eating ramen. What the hell? Sensory ninja, medical ninja, offensive ninja, defensive ninja, genjutsu specialist, ninjutsu specialist, taijutsu specialist? As Naruto dropped the scroll, there's so much to choose from. How do we know which one fit us? I'll be an offensive type, I think Sasuke said. Yeah, definitely. I also specialize in ninjutsu, taijutsu, and genjutsu. Huh? You don't seem the genjutsu type, said Naruto. Not right now, but when I get my Sharingan, it will come naturally. Sharingan? I'll tell you later, Sasuke said. As Naruto shrugged, he picked up another scroll. I think I'll make a good sensor, and I'll probably be a mix of offensive and defensive, specializing in ninjutsu and taijutsu. It would be good to have a sensor on a team, Sasuke said. On the team? Well, we're gonna be on the same team, aren't we? You're probably the only one in the academy I can really stand. And probably that Hayu girl as well. She's the only one that doesn't follow me around like a lost puppy. I didn't know that we get to pick our teammates, said Naruto. We don't, but we can manipulate things so that we do. Explain, said Naruto. From what I can tell, they appear the highest scoring boy and girl with the lowest scoring boy. Therefore, I will become the rookie of the year as expected of me and you get low grades and become the dead last. That way you will end up on the same team even if you're just below me in power. You sound really confident in your own power, said Naruto. I'm an Uchiha. I have a right to be, Sasuke said. As Naruto snorted before he started to laugh, Sasuke found himself actually laughing as well. Time skip. Naruto, Sasuke called out. Around his friend, dear he say best friend, he was different. A lot happier. It had been six months since they met. Before Sasuke only wanted vengeance, but now things were different. As Sasuke realized that, the world was still going, although the Uchiha clan was gone. The people that were so dear to him. He could still get new precious people. Granted he only found one friend so far, but still. And his clan could also be revived. That responsibility rested on his shoulder now. So he couldn't just focus all his attention on getting strong to kill Hikachi. He had to bring back the Uchiha clan better than before. As he could not let it go extinct. Naruto he called out once more. I'm over here. They were given clearance to train in training ground 3. As Naruto was in the center. His back turned to Sasuke. Sasuke was confused. There were several trees around Naruto. The last time he checked there was no trees in the center right there. Did you plant these? Sasuke said confused. Look. Isn't it cool? I can create trees, said Naruto. Huh? Sasuke poked it to make sure he was not lying. It is really wood. But how did you do that? Wood is not an element. Their senses are sharpened enough. So the moment he hears an appear, they heard his sandals touch the dirt. 
I would also like to know that Naruto Gun, he said, looking towards Naruto curiously. Well, I was just sitting here meditating, and I was molding my chakra, however, it felt so different. It felt like my chakra got split. So I tried putting it back together and then, poof. Harrison walked over and pulled the tree himself. As he examined it, Naruto Gun, did you know that the wood release is a bloodline limit? Naruto and Sasuke's eyes both went wide. Whoa, did you hear that, Sasuke? I have a bloodline too. Indeed you do, Nurtakan. Have any of you heard of the wood release before? I heard my father mention it once. Other than that, no, said Sasuke. Nope, said Naruto. The wood release was a special ability of the first Okage boys. Holy mother hovering crap, said Naruto. I'm related to the first Okage, said Naruto. And in turn the second, Nurtakan. But how? I do not know here, since said confused. I didn't think either of her parents were related to them. The second never had any children, and the last known descendant of the first is. Harrison's eyes went wide. No, it, it can't be, he said. Naruto looked towards Sasuke who shrugged. They had no idea what the first was talking about. A smile came on the man's face though as he turned. The last known descendant of the first Akagi was Sneda Senju. However, she was forced to give him up for adoption. Against the wishes of the village as she didn't think that she would be trusted to raise a child. I believe that fate somehow intervened in the child, remained in the village despite everything. As Harrison looked towards Naruto, Naruto-kun, I believe it's time I tell you about your parents. As Naruto's eyes went wide at that, why don't we talk somewhere private? Can Sasuke come, said Naruto, because I'll just tell him anyway, said Naruto. The third looked at Sasuke who thought the old man doubted that he could be trusted. However, those thoughts were not true. As Harrison smiled, of course, good friends should never have to hide things from each other after all. Secrets create a rift between them that can almost never be mended. So Sasuke-kun, would you like to come along as well? Sasuke nodded his head, as he would like to understand how Naruto is related to the first as well. He placed a hand on their shoulders, and they were both taken away in a sunshine. They reappeared at the Hokage Manor. As they arrived towards a room where, the walls were lined with scrolls, as there were some cushions there. Sit down, he said. As Naruto and Sasuke sat down, as the man got a bit serious, now Nurutakan, he said. I want you to remember this is very sensitive information and that your parents and grandparents and great-grandparents and even your great-great-grandparents has enemies that would love to kill you out of spite. Therefore, I would like you two to keep this information to yourself until I deem you strong enough to protect yourself. Is that clear? Yes, JJ, said Naruto. As Sasuke nodded, very well, your mother, her name was Kushina Uzumaki, a member of the Uzumaki clan that resided in the land of Pura Pools, and now destroyed island that is situated on the east to the fire country. This clan was known for their great proficiency in sealing techniques and their longevity. She was an amazingly strong woman, very hot tempered. Here is in pause as he gave a small chuckle. In her youth, she was teasing the ninja Academy because of her own face and hair. The children took to calling her tomato. As Naruto gave a snort, Sasuke had to suppress a smirk, knowing that is the exact name Sasuke would have made up for someone with that kind of appearance. Of course that all changed when she started to pummel those that tease her, causing him to rename her the Red Hot Habanero. As Naruto tensed up a bit, as Sasuke realized that Naruto decided not to go name calling anymore unless the bully actually deserved it. What about my dad, said Naruto. As he shake off the thought of being pummeled by an angry redhead. Was he a super cool ninja or something? Oh yes, he was a super cool ninja indeed. Your dad is the main reason why your lineage has been kept a secret. In the third great shinobi war, he made a lot of enemies and became one of the greatest known enemy to the hidden stone. His name is Minato Namikaze, the fourth Okage. Sasuke eyes widened in shock. As he couldn't believe it as he turned towards Naruto, who seemed to be unable to process that at the moment as he just stood there. My, my dad was... Yes, that's right, Naruto-kun. Your father was a Fortokage, who I know suspected might have been adopted. I believe that he might have been Snelly, biological son. The reason why I haven't told you or anyone else about this, Naruto-kun, is because, well, frankly, you're kind of a loudmouth here since said. Sasuke couldn't suppress as he laughed, seeing the twitch on Naruto's face. If I had told you earlier, you would have screamed out to whoever would have listened. 
This would have been brought to the king's own attention, and they might have come after you. Tch. Fine, I suppose, said Naruto. However, I didn't want to keep it from you any longer. And you're going to need training. There's a man here in Kanoha who is quite proficient at using Mokidon Ninjutsu. And no, he's not a Senju. Said here is an after seeing look on Naruto's face. He was experimented on at a young age and had the first guy genes implanted in him. He is currently served in the Anvu forces, however, I'm going to recall him to become your instructor. As Naruto grinned happily at that. Thanks a lot, Gigi, he said before he turned towards Sasuke. Let's both become super powerful, yeah? Tch. As if I'll let you become stronger than me, you fool, Sasuke said. As Sir Toby looked at the both of them with an eye smile. As he chuckled softly, as Naruto turned towards him. Oi, Gigi. Why are you smiling at that? Are you a pedophile, Naruto asks. Here's an eye twitch. When he opened them, Naruto was gone. Naruto, he screamed. Time skip. Today is the day. Hmm, said Sasuke. As the both of them are heading towards the Ninja Academy, it has been four and a half years since they found out about Naruto heritage. Naruto and Sasuke spend every day studying and training. However, because of the plan, Naruto stuck to being a nobody in the class and did not show her anything. It had been difficult though to get worse grades than Naruto Shikamaru. The boy was smart, however. It was too bothersome for him to lift a pen, as his grades were just as low as Naruto, so he just skipped class a lot of days, so he would not be on the attendance list. As Naruto was dressed in black sandals, black ninja pants, with a holster, strapped to his right leg, and a loose, long sleeved black ninja t-shirt that was rolled up just to his elbows, revealing a mesh t-shirt underneath, as there was a fur on top of it, like the second Okage going around his neck. He was also wearing a flat plate armor and a black 3 inch white bracer on both wrists. Sasuke was wearing a muscle shirt over a mesh shirt with black shorts with a long sleeve coat over it with the Uchiha trademark symbol in the back with a kunai pouch on his left leg and a black chokito that was tucked behind him on the right side. He had identical bracers on both wrists as well. My awesome scoring in the exam won't change my overall grade what it said Naruto. No. The exam is just to show that you can do what they want you to do. Sasuke's voice was as calmer than it once been. However, his voice sounded like that when he was talking to Naruto. Or whoever else he felt that had earned his respect, such as the third Okage and Naruto's teacher that went by the codename Yamato. Huh. Then it would be good, said Naruto as he slammed his fist into his palm to show these punks how really good I am. Of course, most of the academy already knew how strong he really was. Sasuke fangirls had spy on Sasuke training session and when they arrived, they saw the two boys going at it in tents and Naruto could greatly keep up with Sasuke. Well, that is what they saw. And they spread the word, so most people believe that he was just acting stupid for some reason. As Naruto then glanced, the usual fangirls on our six said Naruto. And on top of the roof is Hinata. Hinata. Haven't had her following us for about a week, Sasuke said. It was widely known that Hinata was probably the only girl that didn't have a crush on Sasuke, but she was an admirer. But it wasn't Sasuke that she admired, it was Naruto. She had told Kiba, who had told Shikamaru, who had told Ino, who had told Sasuke that she admired Naruto for his determination and him never giving up. Even when looked down upon by the general populace of the village, he never gave up. She greatly admired his character, however, she was too shy to talk to him. Still stuck at the bunch in though, said Naruto. As he was talking over the clone jutsu, Naruto had just way too much chakra to pull it off. Way ahead of you, Sasuke said. Don't worry. You'll pass with flying colors. The Hokage said that is the minimum of the graduation. So, any clone will do then, said Naruto. Sasuke nodded. Naruto could already use the wood clone and the normal shadow clone jutsu as well. That split your chakra into multiple parts, but because he had enough, he could make a lot. Guess I'll go with the Shadow Clone then, said Naruto, as he didn't want to reveal any of his special skills just yet. Time skip. Aruka was frightened as Naruto beat out everyone, except for Sasuke in the kunai throwing. They both got perfect marks, and both him and Sasuke fought, and they stopped at the stand still, neither of them getting the edge on the other. Aruka was frightened. Naruto even did well in Genjutsu, even though it was not his area of expertise. He could identify and cancel them without any problem and he could cast some low level genjutsu. Aruka never expected any of this 
The next was a ninjutsu portion. Alright Naruto, the last thing that is left is for you to create two normal clone jutsu. And you will pass. As Naruto brought his hand together, without even speaking the words, two clones pop into reality. Aruka was baffled. Are, are those shadow clones, he said. I have too much shocker to do the normal clone jutsu, so these are much better, said Naruto. And besides, they're not illusion, they're actually real. Well, you passed, Naruto, Aruka said. C Congratulations. Aruka just couldn't believe it. Ah, it's cool, said Naruto, I got my own. As he reached into his pouch and pulled out, a grey headband with a seal of Kanoha embedded right on the forehead plaque. It was old and had some scratch here and there, but Aruka's eyes widened. Naruto, is that? The second Akage headband, said Naruto. Yeah, Gigi gave it to me, said Naruto as he placed it on. See you later, Sensei. Making his way outside, Naruto grinned at Sasuke as he pointed towards his headband. Big surprise, dear Sasuke, said rolling his eyes. It's not like he expected anything less. Time skip. Starting today, all of you are not real shinobis, Aruka said. They were all gathered. As they did their test yesterday, the ones that passed were all here. But you're starting as Jennings. The hard journey that lies ahead has just begun to start. Now you will soon get missions to help the village. So today, we will create a three-man cell. And each of you will have a Jonin Sensei. You will follow your Sensei. Instructions to complete your missions. Now, we try to balance each team's strength, he says. He looked down towards the clipboard. Now, for team one. As he started to list off the names. Hey, said Naruto. Did you find out which girl got the highest score? I think it's Hinata and Sakura. They were on top. I hope it's Hinata though. It will be nice to have the girl of the team fawn over someone other than me. If it is her, we're gonna have to do something about her shyness, said Naruto. Agreed. Now for Team 7. Team 7 will be Naruto Uzumaki, Hinata Hayuka, and Sasuke Uchiha. Both Naruto and Sasuke had an identical smirk as they gave each other a high five. As Naruto glanced towards Hinata, her face turned beet red, her eyes wide like saucers. Hey, Aruka Sensei Shikomaru said, speaking up. Are the teams supposed to be balanced? Why are you placing the three strongest on one team? Because Shikamaru, though it is widely known, that Naruto is as strong as Sasuke. We selected the team based on grades. And Naruto came in dead last. I believe they knew about how the teams would be decided. And they planned accordingly. As a smirk came on both of their faces. Alright, as for team 8. It will be consists of Haruna Sakura, Kiba Inazaka and Shino Aberami. Team 9 is still in circulation. Team 10 will be Ino Yamanaka, Shikamaru Nara and Choji Akimichi. Your Jonin Sensei will be here by 12, so take a break and be sure to return by then. Aruka wished them luck as he left. As Naruto got up, Hinata, she jumped as Naruto walked towards her. Sasuke and Aragon grabbed some lunch. You want to come? I am, um, um, she poked her fingers together. Sh sure, Naruto, can she said. Don't go today then, Naruto said to Sasuke, who nodded. Don't go alright with you, Hinata. I I it's fine, she said. Naruto glanced towards Sasuke, who shrugged. The newly made Team 7 moved their way towards the dango shop, where Naruto and Sasuke ordered 10, and Hinata ordered 5 for herself. You didn't pack lunch, said Naruto. As they waited for their food, he looked towards Hinata. You know, come to think of it, I have never seen you eat lunch before. No, I, I go back home to eat lunch, he said. O what about you two? Well, Sasuke preferred dango, however, he can't make it. And me, well, the last time I tried cooking, we both had to battle my creation back to death. He never giggled at that, especially for the look on Sasuke's face as he thought back towards a monster stew. A stew shouldn't have been able to grow tentacles and attack, damn it. So, Hinata, why don't you give us a rundown of your abilities? Sasuke and I know each other's skills well enough, however, we don't have anything on you. Um, oh, uh, I'm kind of weak, she said, in a rather shy tone. That I don't believe, said Sasuke as he looked towards her. If you were weak, you wouldn't have scored the top Kunoichi of the class. How about we go first? Give small introductions. She nodded. Alright, I'm Sasuke Uchiha. I specialize in ninjutsu and genjutsu. My chakra control is excellent and my strength is above average. I don't have the best stamina, however, it's not lousy either. My preferred jutsus are fire jutsus. And I'm Naruto Uzumaki. I specialize in ninjutsu and taijutsu. I'm also a very good sensor, said Naruto. My chakra control is good, but it can be better. 
and my strength is amazing. My stamina is monstrous, and my preferred jutsu are earth and water. And the secret type. The, the secret type, she said. To be revealed on a later date. Now you, said Naruto. I I'm Hinata Hayuka, she said. I specialize in taijutsu. My biak gun makes me a good sensor, I suppose. My chakra control is excellent, like Sasuke. But I'm kind of weak physically. My stamina is also not great. And I prefer my clan jutsu, she said. So, only one of us has focused on genjutsu, Sasuke said. I know that you have a pretty low opinion of yourself, however, I need you to think carefully of yourself. Do you have anything else he asks? Well, I do make my own medicine. Alright, that's great, said Naruto. So you will act as our support. You can also patch up me and Sasuke when we rush into battle head first. Sasuke and I, Sasuke said, as Naruto gave my glare. Shut up, you know it all, he said. As Hinata giggled at their antics. Once they were finished, they headed back to the academy. Where they waited, and waited, and also waited, and then proceeded to wait. As Naruto slammed his face on the decks, someone's finally approaching, he said, his eyes closed. Damn bastard, making us wait this long. The door opened, reveal a masked man. You, boys and girl, I'll be your Jonin Sensei. Hmm, this place is a bit stuffy. Let's go to the roof, he said. Once they got up there, they sat down, as the man was on the railing. Well, let us start with introducing ourselves, shall we? Um, what do you want to know, Sensei? Asked Hinata. Well, your likes, dislikes, dream for the future, things like that. How about you go first, Sasuke said. Yeah, you look very suspicious, said Naruto. Oh, me? Well, my name is Kakashi Hatsuki. I don't feel like telling you my likes or dislikes. Dream for the futures. Hmm, I have one, maybe. And I have a lot of hobbies, he said. The member sweat drop, as he pointed at Naruto. Alright, it's your turn. Start from the right, he said. Fine. The name is Naruto Uzumaki. I like training, the few friends I have. Meditating and nature. I don't like idiots or warmongers, as are my hobbies. Well, I guess I only have training. And my dream is to become the Hokage and surpass all my predecessors, said Naruto. Hmm, good. Next. My name is Sasuke Uchiha. I like training, swords, and meditating. My dislikes mostly consist of idiots and a certain man. My hobby is training and my dream. I don't really have dreams, but rather goals. The resurrection of my clan to kill that certain man and to become Hokage. Well, that last one is gonna have to remain a dream, said Naruto. Sasuke scoffed. As Kekashi watched him, hmm. to think that those two would become friends, he thought to himself. All right. Your last, he said. M my name is Hinata Hayuka. I like Zenzi. And Sinman rules. She stopped as she blushed a bit. As she shook her head, decided to leave that last part out. I dislike those who look down on others. My hobby is pressing flowers. And my dream is to become a Hayuka. Who is worthy of being the head of the clan. And to abolish the cage bird seal from the branch family. Kakashi Hom saw this. He looked over the three of them. As he nodded. Okay. That's it for the introductions. Tomorrow. We'll start our duties as shinobis. First of all though, we're going to do something with the four of us. Oh, what's that, Sensei? Survival training, said Kakashi. Survival training? Then we already do that in the academy, Sasuke said. Oh, this is not your normal survival training. Because I will be your opponent. Their eyes widen as he chuckle. What's so funny, said Naruto. Oh well, it's just that when I tell you this, you guys are gonna freak out. Just spit it out, damn it! Don't keep us in suspense. Of the 27 graduates, only 9 will chosen to become genins. The rest will be sent back to the academy. This training is a very difficult exam. With a failure rate of 66%, everyone's eyes went wide. I told you that you would freak out, Sekigashi. Then what the hell was the graduation for, Naruto asked? Oh, that. That was just to select those that had the potential to become genins. It takes more than a couple of jutes to become one after all, said Kakashi. Anyway, tomorrow you have to show your real skills on the training ground. Bring all the shinobi tools you have and also skip breakfast. You might throw up. As he pulled three pieces of paper out and hand to them. The details are on that paper. Don't be late, he said, and he was gone. The next morning, none of the kids looked tired or hungry. Sasuke said that it was better to throw up 
then fight in an empty stomach because you'll be too weak to do anything. I'm guessing our sense is gonna be late again, Sasuke said. Hinata nodded. I detect a pattern emerging, she said. Well, better make good use of time that we have. As Naruto sat down and crossed his legs. I'll keep a lookout for him. And Sasuke, you come up with some good battle plans. Alright, Hinata, you're proficient in the gentle face, right? I'm not as good as my father or my sister, but I guess she said. Sasuke was quiet for a while until he spoke up. Alright, listen up. I'm sure they were all very strong, however. This guy is an elite Jonin, and I'm not sure that we can win against him alone. Therefore, we're gonna have to work together if we want to beat him. If it come down to a fight, which it most likely will, Naruto will be acting as support. N Naruto can will? But I thought you said I would be the support, she said. I did say that, but in this case, Naruto has a Jutsu special for distracting and capturing Kakashi. While Naruto is distracting him, you and I will come at him in Taijutsu. I'll go high, you go low. If you can, target is nuts, Sasuke said. He not a term beat right at hearing that. Wow, that's kind of cruel, Sasuke said Naruto. Are you sure you want to put our sensei through that punishment? It's punishment for being late, Sasuke said. I do of course have other plans as well. Now, on to plan B, he said. They waited for another two hours. The bastard had the audacity to give them an eye smile and wave happily at them, like he was early. Good morning, everyone. You're late, Naruto said. It's unbecoming of a Jonin. Oh, sorry about that. You see a black cat stop the line. You're wasting our time, said Sasuke. As Kakashi's sweat dropped, how serious, he took off his backpack as he pulled out an alarm clock and placed it. It will be set for noon. So here is your mission, he said. You are to capture these bells, as he pulled two bells and tied them right to his waist. Those who don't have a bell by noon get no lunch. I'll not only tie you to one of those stumps, I'll also eat right in front of you. He did not see the hungry, devastated face that you were expecting to see. Instead, the boys who were glaring at him and the girl was looking shyly at the ground. As he focused back, you only have to get one bell. There are only two, so one of you will definitely be tied to the stump. And the person that does get a bell fails. So one of you will be sent back to the academy. As he saw the surprised looks on their faces. If you want, you can use your weapons. And come at me with the intent to kill otherwise. You will all fail, he said. Any questions? No one said anything, so he nodded. Alright then, begin. They all flashed off. Hmm, what a bastard. Pinning us against each other as well, said Naruto. Yeah, said Sasuke from behind him, looking down. This guy is not someone to be messed with either, from what? The rumor mill says. So, what do you think? Well, neither of us want to be sent back to the academy, however, it will be really shitty for us to team up and left Hinata by herself. Besides, she's the only girl I can actually stand. So what do we do? I say we find a way to get all three of us to pass. How do we do that? We steal everything he has. As Naruto looked towards Sasuke, and a grin came on his face, as Sasuke grinned back. Meanwhile, Hinata hid behind a tree, her eyes closed. She was feeling devastated. Only two may pass. Everyone knew that Naruto and Sasuke were the most, best of friends. So there was little doubt that they would team up and defeat Kakashi and left her by herself. She couldn't believe that she finally done it. She ended up on the same team. As Naruto, I know she had a... Well, they were comrades. But at least she was talking to them. Especially Naruto. And now it was all gonna... Yo. She would have screamed in fright, however, Naruto covered her mouth. It was Naruto. He was touching her. Thankfully, though, she was meant to keep herself in bass note. As Naruto released her. Anyway, Hinata, Sasuke is already in position for plan F. You better get ready. But, but, there's only two. If, now now, said Naruto. We're a team now. Sasuke and I wouldn't feel right leaving you behind, so we're doing this as a team. Besides, we'll be stealing more than just his bells. As Naruto gave her a wink. In the meanwhile, Sasuke made his way around training ground. Seven. They were good. They could probably hide from a Chunin. Wait. He focused on Sasuke's chakra signature. However, he then realized that it was Naruto's. Had he created a clone and manipulated the chakra inside of him. To make it seem like Sasuke. Kakashi ducked under Sasuke Chokito. As Sasuke did not stop as he swung his leg around. Kakashi jumped back as he had to leap away again as Hinata attacked him with her Jayuken. All three of them had ganged up so soon. He honestly wasn't expecting that. 
Both of them attacked him, Sasuke going high. He had to go in low. He had to lean and twist. Considering that they were only using Kinjutsu and Taijutsu, he felt that it would be unfair to use Ninjutsu. Now Naruto Sasuke call out. Kakashi one eye widen. The only warning that he got was a rumbling in the ground. Before wooden poles burst out and wrapped around his arms and legs. What? He said in surprise. He didn't have time to think there was Hinata reach him and slam her palm into his stomach. Poof. He replaced himself with a log. Substitution. He couldn't have gotten too far, Sasuke said. Indeed he hadn't. He blurred right behind Naruto, going into his throat. Naruto's hands were in a snake seal. As Kakashi smiled at the blonde. The Mokitan ninjutsu. I haven't seen that for a while, however. This is the end for you, Naruto. Naruto smirked. Really, he said. He slammed his hand on the ground. In a second, a wooden spy exploded out of it. Kakashi was forced to flip away. Hinata used a tree as she jumped off it and striked out at him. She wasn't as fierce as some of the other Hayukas he sparred with in the past. However, she was just as efficient as he could not let himself get hit by her. That is when he noticed she moved to the side. As he turned fire style. Fireball Jutsu! Impossible. Ajinin shouldn't have that much chakra. Wait. Hinata was too close to him. If he moved, she would also get hit. But he noticed how calm Hinata was. Boom, the ground exploded at her feet. As wooden, vines came out of it and covered her in a protective dome. Kakashi jumped up in the air but more wooden vines reached up and grabbed his ankles and yanked him down. Kakashi was roughly slammed on his back. As he grunted, sure, he wasn't using half of his power in this spar but these kids were at least truly in level already. His three Jennings walk over towards him. As he looked down towards him, as Naruto plucked the bells off him and tossed him to Sasuke, who gave one to Hinata. That is some self-sacrifice you're showing there, Naruto said to Kakashi. Are you sure you want to be sent back to the academy? I won't be sent back, said Naruto as he grabbed Kakashi's pouch and removed it. As he went through it, all of us will pass or none of us will. So I'm going to see if you have anything worth threatening in order to pass us. Kakashi's eyes widened as he saw Naruto pull out his precious book. As Naruto saw his reaction, it seems like our sensei has one of these dirty books. Why don't you set it on fire, Sasuke? Sounds like a good idea, Sasuke said. No, you can't do that. Fine. You, you all pass. Now let me go and give me back my book, said Kakashi. Hmm, said Naruto as he placed the book back in the pouch and dropped on his stomach. He placed hand in a half ram seal as the wood loosened and returned back to the earth. Well, said Kakashi as he got up. As he refastened his kunai pouch, you would have passed anyway. This test was designed to see if he could figure out the hidden meaning behind it. Hidden meaning, said Hinata. As Sasuke hum, you pitted the three of us against. Not only you, but each other as well. There was no way that we could get a bell on our own. So we had to team up. So self-sacrifice. That's right, said Kakashi. The hidden meaning behind the test was teamwork. I wanted to see if you guys could work together as a team. Or if you could sacrifice yourself for the other. Why that didn't work out quite as I planned, you got the gist of it. Of course, individual strength is also important, but what is most important is teamwork. You two are best friends, he said, looking towards Naruto and Sasuke, and yet, you still did not leave Hinata behind to get the bells for yourself. That show that you have character, compassion, and honor. You will be risking your life on these duties. If a hostage is taken, you will have tough choices to make, and you may always not make the right one. As he motioned for them to follow him, where the poles were, there was a monument there, with a lot of names carved on it. Look at this, the numerous names carved on this stone. These are ninjas who are recognized as a hero of this village. But they aren't, just normal heroes. They're all ninjas who died on duty, he said. This is a memorial. My best friend name is also carved here. You guys are the first team I ever pass. Everyone else just did whatever I told them. They were all just morons who only thought about themselves. They never look underneath the underneath. That is something a ninja must always do. Those who break the rules of a ninja world are called trash, however. Those who abandon their comrades are even lower than trash. So remember that. So that ends the training, all of you pass. Tomorrow, we'll start your real training and duties of Team 7, he said, giving them a eye smile. Alright, said Naruto with a happy grin on his face. They were finally official ninjas. As he wondered what kind of missions they were going to do. It's going to be awesome, he thought to himself. But guys, we end up right here. 
If you want to see next parts and do, like, subscribe, comment down below, turn on that bell notification, stay posted. Remember to share some of your friends in your social media platform. And also, guys, remember to go ahead and check out the other channels. Yes, I indeed have four of them, guys. That I post what if on every single day. Yes, you heard that right. Every single day for guys to enjoy. So go ahead and destroy that red subscribe button and become part of the making family. And thank you for all of your help and your support. Remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new. I'll be replying talking back to all of you. So yeah, without further ado, I'm gonna be leaving you guys for now. See you guys very very soon. Peace.